Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And hello and hi everyone. Okay, so how are you today? Okay, I hope all of you are ready to hear our presentation. Okay, we are from group 9. My name is Cik Daniel Irfan bin Cik Adul Hisham and we will present to you about inductive reasoning. Okay, so what is inductive reasoning? Inductive reasoning, we look to the first definition, is about a method of logical thinking in which you use observations combined with the experiential information you already know to be true to reach a conclusion. Okay, so this means uh, the key point that we want to highlight is the observations and the experiential information that true. Then with these two, it will result a yes, a conclusion. This is the inductive reasoning. Okay, so we look to the second point. Inductive reasoning is an approach to logical thinking that involves making generalizations based on specific details, which means uh, we have observation, we have the you know experience information that true. This is the specific details, and with these two, it result a generalized conclusion. This is what we call as an, an inductive reasoning. Okay, so now let's look to the example. Okay, the example given about uh, allergy to strawberries. Okay, so data first is after I ate strawberries, my lips swell. Okay, this is for the first time. Okay, and the next week I ate strawberries again and my lips swell too. Okay, and then three days after that, I ate strawberries again and my lips swell for the third time after I ate strawberries. So, we add some information or some experience that we know through that swollen lips after eating strawberries may be a sign of an allergy. So, we conclude and I conclude myself that I am allergic to strawberries. Yes, we use the specific details and specific observations to conclude a generalized conclusion. Yes, this is inductive reasoning. Okay, so now uh, you can look at the next slide. This is the types of inductive reasoning. So there are six types of inductive reasoning and I simplified it as an acronym. So I call it a guess cap, guess cap, generalization, analogy, sign, C for causation, a for authority and P is for parallel case. So parallel case different with analogy because analogy is similarity between two dissimilar cases. But parallel case uh, observation to similarity between two similar cases. Two similar, two dissimilar. This is the difference between analogy and parallel cases. Okay, so now we move to the next slide which is the difference between inductive and deductive. So inductive and deductive, inductive known as top-down approach, which means top, uh, we go from the specific details to the generalized conclusion. Why the deductive reasoning is bottom-up approach, which means the general things, general premise to, yes, to specific conclusion. Yes, this is what it means by top-down and bottom-up approach. Okay, how about the validity of these two reasoning? Okay, so inductive reasoning, if the premises are true, the conclusion uh, is probably true. While deductive reasoning, if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. You see the keyword? Probably true and must be true. So the goal is inductive reasoning is about the probability, probability, while the deductive reasoning is about the certainty. Okay, so the base for inductive reasoning is based on patterns and connections, while deductive reasoning is based on facts truth or rules okay so this is about the introduction of inductive reasoning we'll move to the next presenter thank you okay so thank you brother Chet daniel Ifan, uh, for the examples and, and the, for the meanings and examples of the inductive reasoning so now um, i will present about the strengths of inductive reasoning so um actually you have been using inductive reasoning for a very long time as inductive reasoning is based on your ability to recognize meaningful patterns and connections by taking into account both examples and your understanding of how the world works 
Inductive reasoning um, allows, uh, first, firstly, allows you to conclude that something is likely to be true. By using inductive reasoning, you move from specific, specific data to a generalization which tries to capture what the data means. Imagine, uh, for example, imagine that you ate a dish of strawberries and soon afterwards, your lips swelled. Now, imagine that a few weeks later, you ate strawberries and soon afterwards, your lips again became swollen. The following month, you ate yet another dish of strawberries and you had the same reaction as formerly. You are aware that swollen lips can be a sign of an allergy to strawberries. Using induction, you can conclude that more likely than not, you are allergic to strawberries. Okay, so uh, the example can be seen the, uh, below. The first premise, after I ate strawberries, my lips swell. Okay, this is for the first time I ate strawberries. And then a few weeks later, after I ate strawberries, my lips swell again for the second time. And then a month later, um, I ate strawberries again and again for the third time my lips swelled became swollen so I've been known so I al I've already known that swollen lips after eating strawberries could be a sign of an allergy so to sum up um, it can be concluded that likely or probably I am allergic to strawberries from this type of reasoning it will enhance our ability in high-order thinking skills and creating hypotheses when we are conducting experiments. And now, I will move to the second strength of the inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning um, actually also helps invest uh, detectives in investigating crime. Detectives use this method of reasoning when investigating a crime as they see patterns or make observations that lead them to certain conclusions. That sets their path in motion and they will either prove their conclusion right or wrong with further investigation. The value is that this form of reasoning has at least given them some direction. Okay, so take a look at um, the man in the photo um, at left of the slide in the photo. Um, the man in this photo is a police detective. He's examining and gathering clues that may help solving a crime. Based on all of the clues he finds, he may be able to conclude who committed the crime. Working scientifically is similar to solving crimes, as it also involves gathering evidence and drawing conclusions. Both detective works and scientific experiments use inductive reasoning. So my question, how might the police detective uh, pictured on the left um, use inductive reasoning to solve the crime? So um, the, uh, the correct answer is the detective might gather clues that provide ev evidence about the identity of the person who committed the crime. For example, he might find fingerprints or other evidence left behind by the perpetrator. The detective might eventually find enough clues to be able to conclude the identity of the most likely suspected person. So that's all from me about the strengths of inductive reasoning. And now I'd like to proceed uh, to brother Fikri uh, who will present about the weaknesses of inductive reasoning. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Muhammad Fikri Min Zaini. Now, I will present about the weakness of inductive reasoning. Before that, we know that Lokman was present about the advantage and strength of inductive reasoning. However, inductive reasoning also have a weakness and disadvantage of itself. Uh, you may reach a false conclusion even with er accurate observation. Okay, the main weakness of inductive reasoning is that it is incomplete. You reach false conclusion even with accurate observation. Okay, for example, you look at 100 dogs and then you find that they all have fleas 
and and then you declare that all dog have fleas the problem or the weakness here is you are not examine all dog if one dog found it with, without fleas your conclusion is proven wrong so here what you can determine or what can you decide is a dog will have fleas because all dog have you meet have fleas okay uh the more uh the more observation you make will determine how accurate your conclusion is okay the another witness or the another problem of inductive reasoning uh, comes uh, when your observation are incorrect for example you have only seen a large dog and then you might conclude that all dog have all dog are large so your reasoning is sound or we can call it uh, valid but uh, your observation are incorrect or incomplete uh, this is because if you make a further observation you will see they also have a small dog so your conclusion uh, your observation are incorrect so here the weakness of inductive reasoning so that's all from me assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. My name is Wanda Siddiq. So today I'm going to present to all of you about the application of inductive reasoning in daily life as a student. So let's dig into this topic. So there are six points of this inductive reasoning, but I'm going to present to all of you about the first three of these points. Okay, so next is, the first point is reasoning by generalization. So if we reflect this point as a student, we can say that this reasoning is used when the student wants to explain the students want to expect or assume the question in examination. So the student will come with specific observations. So the student will say that, okay, during the first sem last year, I saw that 85% of examination, examination question came from the lecture slides. He says, it is 85%, okay? So next is, I see that the last year, the second sem last year, I saw that 82% of Exam question came from the lecture slide and the last sem, last year sems, okay, and the third sem of last year, I see that 83% of the examination question came from the lecture slide. So, I have my general claim. So, I'll say that probably this semester, there will be 80% something, 80% maybe of the examination, examination question come from lecture slide. So, this is what we say as reasoning by generalization. So they came up with something generally saying that this is coming from this because of this. As this is my experience. So that is something that we call as reasoning by generalization. So next is reasoning. So next point is reasoning by analogy. So this reasoning, uh, <coughs> this reasoning always be used during the student want to justify himself can be a. Uh, uh, representative of university sport teams or not okay so let's see the first they will do a specific observation so they will say that okay this reasoning of analogy always be done by almost every day of us okay because of we say that okay this kind of person is this is uh, sorry this kind of person can be this kind of things because of this thing this thing this things because of we come with the reasoning because of Okay, he has the aspirin of doing that. So, no wonder he can do that again. Or like, like that. So, the special observation is said that Hafiz is a volleyball player for IUM volleyball team because he is an athlete of volleyball during his secondary school. So, Hafiz is athlete for IUM because he has the experience of being volleyball athlete at his secondary school. So, people saying that because of he has the experience. And like, and like the second point of special observation say that, Fatin is a netball player of the IIUM netball team because she is an, sorry, because she was an athlete of netball during her foundation studies. Safe as maybe, or metrics, I don't know. But 
because Fatin had because Fatin has the experience of being netball player, so she can be a thing of IIUM as a netball player. So people are doing this. Okay, so people are doing this kind of reasoning by analogy because of seeing that this kind of person have the experience of doing that. So generally claim that. So the student will claim generally say that saying that anyone can play a football for IIUM football team if they have contributed in football as a representative before. For example, maybe in my secondary school or maybe in my primary school I being I, I, I played football and but now I'm not because of maybe I have some injuries or maybe I'm not. So this kind of re reasoning by analogies actually uh, they have a logic but they can be truth or not. Okay, so let's move to the last point of my pr my presentation is reasoning by sign okay so this reasoning is always be used while the student want to predict they have a robot this is this is an example but but we can we can use this reasoning by sign in other circumstances but but uh, this the, the the example given is the reason this reasoning is used while the, while the student want to predict uh, sorry, the students want to predict they have a Roblox or not, okay, at IIM campus. Okay, so they will come up with this passive observation by sign. They will see the sign of the observation, okay. So first is the transport on the road is moving slowly, not like usually the student will will swiftly go into somewhere they want to go. But today, oh, this kind, this, this motorcycle rider is is sorry it's riding slowly so there's, there must be something in front of him so like that and there's and the second point is some student using motorcycle make a u-turn for example like you are you are riding your motorcycle and the motorcycle in front of you make a u-turn so that oh my god why this guy why these people uh, is making u-turn maybe there's something in front of him maybe roblox or something like that so this is the second sign of reasoning by sign so Next is many students walking to class compared to using compared to using their transport. For example, uh, today you are using your motorcycle, but you you saw that uh, sorry you see that oh there is a lot of people walking to class compared today, but today is not raining or white, but people are people are tend to using their their legs to, to walk. Okay, but why they are walking? Maybe something happened like that. So there is. The, so this is these are the the sign or a specific observation of sign by they are using the reasoning by sign. So they came up with generally claim saying that probably IIUM auxiliary police or we can call it as awesome make and roadblock in front of us, uh, like on the road. So I have to I have to to uh, prevent from to use the road because of I don't have sticker like that. So. They are using this reasoning by sign by doing that. For example, they want to predict something. So that's all from me. Thank you. Reasoning by causation. So when the student use this reasoning is while the student want to stand about one type particular thing that will affect the student. So such as the student use this reasoning while they want to stand that addicted to online game is not good to the student. So how the student uh, come up with this uh, reasoning by the through the uh, specific observation. So first the student see that the online game make the student late sleep. Uh, because some students when they play the online game they play on night and then they uh, sleep at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. or other time. And then uh, uh, the second uh, specific observations, the uh, they see that online game distracts student focus, such as when the student play the online game during the class session, uh, because uh, such as uh, their friend have making a presentation, and then they think the presentation is not important to them, and then uh, because they say oh, I I still can listening, okay. Uh, then the third uh, specific observations, the students see that the online game tend to people being toxic, toxic people, uh, such as when in the team, uh, one of the teammate, one of the participant is not performing good, and then other teammate be become toxic to them and say anything about him. Uh, so from uh, all of the specific observations that uh, the students see, and then the student come up with one 
general claim which is that inductive reasoning so, so the claim is uh, they say that addicted to an online game will affect a student performance so this is a general okay otherwise we can see that a lot of things can make the student uh, can affect the student performance okay so uh, uh, they come up with the one general they say that addicted to an online game will affect to the student performance so now we move to the reasoning by authority so basically uh, the student use the reasoning while they want to choose uh, the suitable person to teach them during revision sessions or discussions okay so for example they do use that during uh, the student want to stand the suitable person uh, to guide them during revision sessions so uh, they come up with the two specific observations so they observe uh, one they see that the sisters trust on Amira to teach history because uh, she get an A for uh, history subject okay so the sisters believe on Amira because Amira get A subject and then the second specific observation the brothers uh, trust on Akil to teach science subject because Akil get an A for that subject and then this uh, 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 because they say oh maybe Akil excellent in science therefore uh, Akil get A on the subject and then the brothers choose Akil for uh, guide them do, uh, uh, to teach them uh, science okay so from the two specific observations uh, the student come up with one general claim which is the student claim that we must trust on the student who get A for that subject in any subject to teach us means that the students say that whoever that get A in subject uh, on the, uh, only can teach us uh, because that uh, to them get A is an excellent otherwise we can see that uh, not only get A but is fully understand is important to teach other person okay even though then they, uh, they uh, don't get an A but fully understand, uh, fully understand is important but this is the general claim and then the claim generally they say that whoever get A uh, can teach them because they see through the specific observation uh, the student who get A can teach other student okay lastly is reasoning by parallel case okay so basically the student use this reasoning while they want to expect or estimate what will happen to him while they not follow the certain rule okay for example the student use this reasoning while they want to estimate what they will face while not performing on study so from the uh, observation which is specific observation first the student see that he missed the uh, class for 10 times for one semester uh, we, as we can as we know uh, for one semester we cannot uh, absent the class for more than 20 percent without reason okay so second the students see that he didn't submit any research paper or any assignment that given to him okay so uh, the, uh, the third the students see that uh, he get a low mark on the quiz test uh, due to he not study or he doesn't have time to study it depends to the student okay that uh, the specific observation that the student see on himself and then from the all of specific observation they come out with one inductive reasoning which is general claim that the student say probably he will be barred uh, in this semester and uh, we, he need to repeat the subject to this semester uh, because he see he see from the specific observation he see he see that he not good performing uh, in this semester for that subject and then uh, otherwise we can see that uh, they also are the reason to, uh, for the one student be, uh, will uh, bar such as uh, for one student can bar uh, other such as the student have a problem or uh, anything related to the student so uh, the general claim that the student claim is that probably he will be bar and need to repeat this subject for the next semester due to he not performing on the one uh, on that subject in this semester so that's all from me thank you Bismillahirrahmanirrahim let us continue our presentation today on inductive reasoning now we have come to the subtopic which is inductive reasoning in the Quranic text. Let us see it together. Now, before we go to the context on Quranic uh, verse, the Quranic text, let us revise back some uh, of the meaning of inductive reasoning. What is inductive reasoning? Inductive reasoning is a method of reasoning that uses a large number of specific observations to reach a general 
a general principle from specific to a general principle now let us continue uh, on the discussion inductive reasoning uh, in the quranic text let us see whether al-quran rejects inductive reasoning or al-quran uh, low inductive reasoning uh, to be carried out by muslims okay as we can see in the slide the quran gives emphasis to inductive reasoning as we can see in the ayah surah az-zumar ayat 18 let us recite it together أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك الذين هداهم الله وأولئك هم أولو الألباب Those who listen to all statement and then follow the best of it These are the ones whom God has guided and these are the ones process of mind okay from this ayah let us see uh, what is the relationship between this ayah and inductive reasoning let us see it together after recitation of the ayah we can see the term alladhina yastami'un al-qawl al-qawl here uh, translated as all statesmen although it is in singular uh, in arabic al-qawl is singular aqwal is plural but it is this in, in this ayah, uh, it is a collective noun denoting plurality and means the word, all words, and the whole speech. This is reasoning by analogy, which observe fundamental similarity between the characteristic of the similar case. Okay, let us uh, go deep uh, into the discussion, uh, which is the specific observation and which is the general claim. From the ayah, we, see, uh, we have recite Alladhina uh, yastami'un al-qawl The meaning is those who listen to all statements All statements here means uh, the specific statement which the servant of Allah observe uh, the statement by going from another religion to another religion expert to ask them about God about religion authenticity the concept of their religion in a specific way this is to specifically know the truth about the religion. Okay, uh, now we have clear about the specific observation. Uh, about the general claim, after we have made a specific observation, الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ They uh, have uh, effort, uh, have uh, put their effort to listen to all the statement. And then we can make general claim uh, in the ayah said, فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ they follow the best. He follow the best of it. So, after we make a specific comparison between religion, so in general, we can conclude that the best of the religion will be followed. Okay, still in the inductive reasoning in the verse before, uh, when we apply to education uh, and school education in particular, this call to listen to all statements and then follow the best of it. Ask children and youngsters to learn about all sorts of concepts, faiths and ideas and then to compare and choose their own religion. Indeed, if they want one as they grow older to better argue and analyze. This is inductive reasoning when we are uh, in this ayah when we apply to education. Last but not least, not only in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the inductive reasoning in the Quran, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also praise those people uh, who use inductive reasoning uh, in this verse. Uh, importantly, the Quran identifies this inductive reasoners as guided and rational. Uh, the one whom God has guided and these are the one process of mind which in the Quran said Ulul Al-Bab basically guided and rational are the people who take into account all scientific, philosophical, socio-political and religious concepts and opinion and all results yielded, yielded by observation from various angles and consideration from various viewpoints we can call this holistic okay although inductive reasoning have uh, their own weakness and but it also also have uh, it owns uh, strength in it thus 
uh, uh, Quran shows us that inductive reasoning play a big role in our life, in our daily life, uh, as well uh, it comprehend uh, the worldly uh, matters and also uh, the akhirah matters. That's all. Thank you.